today we are celebrating a, a votive mass to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Um, this is an image of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. If you look in his heart, um, his heart is on fire, and there's a, a cross right above the heart, and there's also the crown of thorns around the heart, um, letting us know that there's lots of things going on in the, in the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And, you know, I was just thinking about the idea of our hearts um, today. And it's interesting um, when you look back into history, um, at, at, in the time of the Bible, um, they would talk about the heart a lot. Um, the, the word heart is used many, many times, hundreds of times in the Bible. Um, but at some point we started talking about body and soul. We started talking about the intellect and the emotions and the mind and our feelings and we started to separate the, the human person um, to try to maybe look at it in a different way but in the end um, the heart involves our whole person um, it's our body and our soul it's our intellect and our emotions it's our mind and our feelings it's our whole person and so and when Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, um, he's saying, love the Lord your God with all that you are. And we see many scriptures on the heart. For instance, out of the abundance of the heart, um, the mouth speaks. That's another thing that Jesus says in the Gospels. Whatever is happening in our hearts, it's going to come out of us eventually, um, good or bad. Um, we hear in the Old Testament, a humble and contrite heart um, you will not spurn or you will not reject. Um, if we have a humble heart, um, God will receive us. He will accept us. Um, we want to have a humble heart. Um, another place in Scripture says, Open my heart that I might see the wonders of the Lord. Um, if our hearts are open, um, then we can see what God is doing. And um, we can also see the wonders of the Lord. Um, it's not hard to see the wonders of the Lord here in Sedona. Um, there's so much beauty surrounding us um, that we can see the wonders of the Lord, especially if our hearts are open. And we even talk still in our own modern times about things like um, someone had a hard heart or they hardened their hearts against us or hardened their hearts in relationship to God. Or someone has a, a soft heart, and we can even pray that prayer, soften my heart, O God. Um, that I might be more open to you. Um, you know, on the one hand, someone could have a wicked heart. On the other hand, someone could have a pure heart. And we can open our hearts to God. We can close our hearts to God. And even, and again, in the New Testament, we hear um, only the Holy Spirit knows the thoughts and desires of our hearts. Um, only the Holy Spirit really knows what's going on in our hearts. Sometimes we we do know what's going on in our hearts. Other times, we really don't. Um, but God does, and the Holy Spirit does. And with all of that in mind, if you come to the chapel, um, you know that I reflect a lot upon this idea of God healing our hearts, and the healing of our hearts, and the healing of relationships, and the healing of whatever has happened to us that shouldn't have happened, and the healing of... Um, in regards to maybe things we've done and that we regret. And healing of the heart is really healing of the whole person. Um, body, mind, heart, emotions. Um, it's healing us physically, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually. Um, it's healing our whole person. That's what healing of the heart is. Um, the best definition I've ever heard on the heart um, came from a retired bishop, Bishop Laverty, and he has this to say about the heart. He says, the image of the heart suggests something that is most intimate, most personal to an individual. Indeed, the term heart often stands for the whole person. Thoughts, feelings, the core of one's inner life and personality, the spiritual center of one's entire being. The heart is the source of one's deepest motivation, decisions, memories, and desires. We use the word heart to signify not just the physical organ, but a person's disposition, the way one looks at other people, at life itself, 
and at everything that exists. For this reason, in the sacred scriptures, we find the heart spoken of as the place where a person encounters God, the place in which God dwells, and in which he works to bring about conversion, a change of heart, enlightenment, and new life. And so Bishop Laverty there has lots to say about the heart. And a lot of times I'll, when I use that quote, then I'll start talking about our hearts, trying to reflect on what's happening in our hearts. Um, but today I want to do something a little different, which is to try to think about what's happening in, in Jesus's heart. And um, when we think about the sacred heart of Jesus, um, what's happening in his heart? And if we can learn what's happening in his heart, then maybe we can apply that into our own lives. Um, for instance, Jesus's heart is always filled with love, and it's never filled with hate. Um, Jesus, his heart is always filled with love. It's never filled with hate. No matter what's happening to him, no matter what somebody's doing to him, um, he does not allow his heart to be filled with hate. Um, his heart is also filled with faith and trust, um, not overwhelming doubt and discouragement. Again, no matter what the circumstance, um, Jesus' heart is filled with faith and trust, and he doesn't allow his heart to be overcome by doubt and discouragement. Um, Jesus' heart was a heart that was on fire for love um, and with love, and St. Margaret Mary is the one that saw this image of Jesus in prayer, and she had someone painted for her, and, you know, we see his heart on fire with love, um, on fire with love for us, um, with love for each of us. And his heart, Jesus' heart, was open um, to everything that the Father wanted to do. Um, Jesus' heart was never closed um, to what God the Father wanted to do. And part of that is because he trusted his Father, um, he trusted him completely, and so whatever he was asking him to do, um, he was willing to do, even to go to the cross. Um, he was willing to do that. Um, his heart was open um, to everything God the Father wanted him to do. And Jesus' heart also listened to the Holy Spirit. Um, he was always listening to the Holy Spirit in his heart. And we see this in the gospel sometimes, where Jesus is like, okay, we're going to go this way now. All these people are here. We're done with these people. We're going on to the next town. We're going across the sea. We're not going to stay here. And, and Jesus was always listening to the Holy Spirit and um, following whatever the Holy Spirit would, would lead him and his disciples, um, whether it was leaving somewhere or whether it was working with an individual for a particular amount of time, and um, whatever it might be, and Jesus was always listening to the Holy Spirit, giving him words to say, giving him thoughts to think. Um, Jesus was very, very open to the Holy Spirit in his heart. And Jesus was able to forgive um, quickly in his heart. Um, he was able to forgive quickly in his heart. That doesn't mean he wasn't hurt by things that happened. It doesn't mean that he didn't you know, experience um, the hurt and the pain of, of rejection. But when he experienced that, he quickly was able to forgive. And we see that on the cross. I'm on the cross. He's dying. He's already nailed to the cross. And he's saying, um, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And so when we think about these things, we think about what's happening in Jesus' heart, and we can pray that what was happening in his heart um, will happen in our hearts. And, and this is a way in which we can grow. Um, it's a way in which we can become a more and more like Jesus. Um, I, I passed out the act of consecration um, to the sacred heart of Jesus, and um, this is a prayer that St. Margaret Mary came up with. I kind of revised it a little bit here and there to make it easier to pray. Um, but this prayer is a way in which you can give your heart to Jesus. Um, really, each and every day, it's not that long. You're free to take them home. And consecrating our hearts um, to the sacred heart of Jesus 
um, either daily or weekly or you know frequently um, is a way in which um, we can be open um, to all that God wants to do in our hearts and so we're just gonna um, conclude um, by praying this prayer together sacred heart of Jesus to you I consecrate and offer up my heart, my life, my actions, trials, and suffering, that my entire being may only love, honor, and glorify you. This is all I want, to belong entirely to you, and to do all for your love, renouncing with my whole heart all that displeases you. Sacred Heart of Jesus, you are the sole object of my love, the protector of my life, the pledge of my salvation, the remedy of my frailty and inconstancy, the reparation for all the defects of my life, and my secure refuge at the hour of my death. Be most merciful heart, my justification before God your Father and screen me from the judgment I have so justly merited. I fear punishment because of my own weakness and malice, but I place my entire confidence in you. Heart of love, I hope in your infinite goodness. Take away from me all that can displease or resist you. Imprint your pure heart so deeply in my heart that I may never forget you or be separated from you. Jesus, I ask you, through your infinite goodness, grant that my name be engraved upon your heart. For in this I place all my happiness and all my glory to live and to die as one of your devoted disciples. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we do pray that we can give our hearts more fully to you, that we might give our hearts more fully to your Son, and that we might have hearts that are filled with your love, that are filled with trust and faithfulness, hearts that are on fire, hearts that are open, hearts that are listening to the Holy Spirit, and hearts that are able to forgive um, quickly. And we pray this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.